Hey everybody, welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. On this episode, we're going to be building up the flaps and uh, then there might be a surprise in the end of this video. So stay tuned and if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video and like and share my videos. I appreciate you watching. Thanks. Okay, before we can build up the flaps, I want to have to. I'm going to have to take the wing off the table because I want to put my board back up here. It's actually a five-inch piece of sh uh, sheet of drywall, and uh, once I get that up here, uh, we'll get started. So after I remove the wing, I remove the jig, and before I sheet the bottom of the wing, I'll re-glue this to the table, but not until after. I get the flap holes and everything situated and the aileron linkage exit. That all has to be planned out before I can actually glue the wing down to where I know when I put that sheeting on, it won't be warping the wing any. So I already broke the, the glue joint free from the jig. Now the trick is to get this thing off. It's been glued on there for who knows how long. I'm gonna set this aside. Hopefully I can break this with the razor blade. Okay, hopefully I don't cut the crap out of my hand doing it. What I like about this granite top, you can go over it with a razor blade, it's clean as a whistle. That looks better. Not a bad looking backdrop either. Okay, I'm going to start off by taping down these flat plans. They, uh, really curly right now. I'm going to try to take some of that curl off. That's a little better. I'm going to just do these right here, just like this, I'll tape them down. That way I can keep you guys in the same frame for both the left and the right. And this, I don't know what it is, but this masking tape made by duct tape, it stinks. It doesn't stick with the crap and a couple days it'll, it'll come up. I'm hoping this green stuff will do a little better.
Okay. Let's get to it. Okay, we start off by uh, getting your flat materials ready. This is the leading edge, quarter by 5 sixteenths by 36 inch. It'll be cut in half, obviously. These are the trailing edge of the flat plywood, 1 16th by 1 by, I think it's 18 or 19. Two of those. Two sheets of your 3 by 1 16th by 30 inch balsa sheeting. Two thir three or one or three thirty seconds by three thirty seconds, you know, square by thirty or twenty four stringers. One eighth by three thirty seconds by twenty four stringers, and then your flap ribs are the five sixteenths by three thirty seconds by thirty inch sticks. Okay, we'll get situated and get these things built up. Okay, in one of my previous videos, I, I was doing the trailing edge on the flap on the wings. And uh, I mentioned that these one inch by 16th by 18 or 19 inch pieces of plywood, they kind of like bow on the end. So I went ahead and checked the straightness of it. This side is perfectly straight, but it bows in. This is going to be the inboard, which is this little angled section here. So I'll have this like that and this one like that. That'll form the uh, flat trailing edge. And as you can see, the bowed section is going to be cut off on both sides. Then I'm going to glue the 16th inch balsa to this after I get this cut the size. These plywoods have to get cut the size. Get them squared up and then glue them like I did, did gluing two sheets of balsa together. Okay, now I'm gonna line this up to mark where I need to cut. This bold line that goes around the perimeter, what I'm doing with it is I'm kind of splitting the difference when I put the wood over it. Cause you don't, you know, it's really vague in how you how to cut it. So I just usually split the difference on the bold line. It gives you it'll give you a decent gap. You can even make that line disappear if you want and just sand what you you know what you don't need. Matter of fact, I might do that widthwise. That way when I fit it up to the plane, I can adjust it, you know, by either sanding this edge or sanding this edge to fit in there perfect. So that's what I'll do. Split the difference on either side here. Make the line disappear right here. I like to use this clear ruler because it's easy to see the lines. check looks pretty good I'll go ahead and mark this one Let's cut them off. Put a new blade here. 
is this uh, plywood probably not going to be too easy to cut through. Now I'm going to leave that line when I cut this and I'll sand it to the right size. Try not to press too hard because it'll break the tip inside the wood. Done that a million times. So I just stretched that to help it a little bit. closer I don't know what all you guys want to see when I'm doing this do you want to do it real time or do you want do you like the stop or the time lapse because if it's real time I could be doing this for hours okay there's one check check that bit Perfect. I'll do this. Same thing, I'm going to just make the line disappear underneath the ruler just barely. I'm just barely bending that. I don't want to break it because it'll shred the other side. I'm just doing that to help it cut easier. that one and I think what I'll do is I'll mark right left on the flap that's perfect okay this will be the right flap and I'll mark it in a place where it's not going to get covered by a rib Right, next step is to line up your balsa wood and cut it to size. I think before I do that, I want to I want to square this edge and square this edge. You should remember this deal on how to square the edge. You just Put the rule on either end of the of the balsa sheet and just cut her off and then put it on the edge of a table with a T-bar and uh, sand it square.
Gotta be careful with this piece because it's got a lot of knots in it. Cut a, cut a piece of balsa with a lot of knots in it. It could draw the knife in or out and make your line crooked. That'll upset you. Okay, so got that. Now I'm gonna turn it this way and sand that edge. Make sure that balsa doesn't lift up on you. Now we'll test fit it on the edge. I already sanded this edge, it was already straight. So we'll test fit that to see. And yeah. Got a little bit of a gap. Let's see how straight that ball is. The balls is straight. So this has a little bit of a gap, so I'll sand that a little more. It's not too much. I'll use this 60 grit side first. Just very lightly. Make sure this stays square. Now I'll turn it over on the 120 grit side. It should get it close enough. So check it. And that is darn near perfect. I think I might just sand just a little bit more. I like that. I'm happy with it. So that'll be the right flat. We'll do the same thing to the left side. Check this first. I think I'll go ahead and sand that first. This is the trailing edge that the ply is. It helps if you're going to build planes, you know, for the, your lifetime. It helps to invest in good tools that you know will last forever. And these, these uh, permagrit tools, not a sponsor, are uh, one of the best sanding tool I have. They're all a little bowed or warped. Let the knife do the work. Don't don't push hard. I can feel the knots being cut. Turn this around, sand that edge. And 
this should match up perfectly. All right, and I'm gonna try to get rid of that part. I really don't like knots in my wood, but that's the only thing I have left. The ones that don't have the, the knotty wood, I feel is too soft for uh, what I'm gonna use it for. Okay, now, as you can see, the width of this flap, you got plenty to play with here. Cause this is like four inches. This is like three and a half, maybe three and a quarter. So what we have to do is we got to make that skin. It's going to be the full perimeter here. And your leading edge or the part that goes towards to the root of the flap, it gets glued on top of that, just like that. So we'll get set up and we'll, uh, I'm going to glue these together just like I did, you know, the, the wing sheeting and all that other sheeting, we'll glue that together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue it, I'm gonna glue this uh, plywood strip inboard a little bit so that I have enough to cut it off square and nice and neat. And I got room to mess with this over here. So we'll cut that now. Or actually, I'm gonna glue them first, then I'll cut them. All right, I moved my board forward so that I can use the tabletop. It's a lot, that way I know it's, perfectly flat. So what I'm going to do is tape these together. You've seen me do this on previous videos, but this is different because it's got the uh, plywood flap edge. I fold that end over like that. So when you tape this together, you can easily peel it apart. Tape up the finger trick. And we'll start going. The side that I'm gluing is gonna be the side where all the ribs are put. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna get it as perfect as you can. I try to strive for as, as much perfection as I can get, but you know, I'm only human, so it'll turn out the way it's gonna turn out. And that while I'm doing this, I'm making sure I'm, it's flat. You want to make sure it's flat against the table before you glue it. So once it's flat, you squeeze it together and then, and then apply your glue. You don't want to apply your glue while you're trying to get it flat because you're going to glue it crooked. Or you'll have a ridge on both sides. That's what I'm doing with my finger here. And then I'm gonna lightly sand this because 
plywood is harder than balsa wood. So if you go crazy with your sandpaper, you're gonna turn that 16th inch sheet into a 30 second sheet and this will stay a 16th and you'll be pretty upset with yourself. I'm just lightly sanding that edge off. I'm not uh, applying hardly any pressure. Just let the sand bar do its trick. And then I just go ahead and sand the whole sheet, at least the part you're going to be gluing to. So it looks nice. See that side's, side's gonna be showing. That's gonna be the part that's glassed. It looks really nice. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do the right flap before I cut any of them. I'm just concentrating on that little ridge there mainly on the plywood, not on the balsa wood. Good enough for me. Or as dad would say, close enough for government work. All right, we'll do this one. I'm gonna come down on this edge. There's less knots. Try that. Yeah, don't really matter. Don't know how long this video is gonna be, but it'll give you something to watch.
Okay. First, I'm going to sand that ridge on the plywood side, and then I'll sand the whole sheet smooth. And you'll notice how I'm sanding. I'm sanding cross grain this way, and then I swap up and go that way. That way it sands more evenly. And that ridge is almost gone already. Just let the sanding bar do the work. Okay, now I'll sand the whole sheet lightly. Lovely. And that's nice and smooth too. And that's how you glue the plywood to the balsa wood. Okay, now in preparation for cutting these this way and this way to line up these edges, I'm going to go ahead and extend this line on both of these flaps so that I can put this up on there and I can see my line on the other side. See what I did there, that way I can see it a lot easier. Do the same on both of them. And that line I'm putting on the outside of that, or on the very edge of that bold line. Right. Now we'll see if we can see it. Left flat. drawing a line. I'm not going to be cutting it on my plans because I don't want to cut my plans up. Always double check your positioning. I'm going to use that that line as well. And even if I cut too far that way, I can always sand it to that edge. But you don't, you don't ever want to cut it short. Take care of the edges, then we'll have to 
determine the width as well. I'll mark the other one. <coughs> Balsa doesn't like ballpoint pens. Okay, now I'll cut them. And I'm gonna, when I cut them, I'm gonna leave that line. And I'm gonna put a fresh blade in. You always wanna keep a fresh blade whenever you do fresh cuts. Keep this piece of ball so you never know when you might need it. Now before I cut the other one, I'll match this up. See how close I am. This side here is dead on. This side needs a little bit of sanding. And we're gonna do that with this. That way I keep that edge square. Just doing that very lightly. I want that edge to be crisp and as perfect as possible. I think I like it. That one's done. I'll cut this one.
straighten that edge up. A little bit of the lip on it. Straighten this one up. Perfect. Okay, next we'll set up to do this side to side and I'm going to do the same thing on these plans I'm going to leave that black line just cut on the very edge of it and we're cutting the balsa side not the plywood side just need enough to see your edge baby up and cut her hopefully matter of fact I might taper down just to as an added safety measure once they get her position I'm gonna tape it on that plywood because I don't want to pull the drain off of the balsa That'll just keep it stiff. I'll go ahead and tape this one too while I got the tape out. So, I think I'm just going to cut it. I'm not going to mark it first. Oh, wait. Shoot. Dang it. I'm going to have to mark it because I'm not cutting on my plan. Put a dash on either side instead of going all the way because these pens are hard to write on balsa wood. I'm using one of them gel pens if you're wondering. Tape the dang thing down for nothing. You guys got any uh, comments suggestions gripes whatever just leave them down there in the comment box and i usually always get back to people
Helps to have cutting mats of all different sizes. And you don't want to always cut in the same direction because the knife will grab in one of those grooves and drag it. It'll move your ruler. So I suggest replacing these from time to time. I haven't replaced mine yet, but I will eventually. What do you think I'm going to do after I'm done cutting this part off? You got three guesses and the first two don't count. Yep, I'm going to square those edges off. But before you sand it, you want to put it up against your outline. Make sure you're within your boundaries. And pray that you're not uh, too far inside. Okay, this is the right. Okay, I got room to sand that one. Okay, we got room to sand both up. So I'm gonna get my trusty sandbar and flip it around. And we're just going to lightly sand until we get that line disappeared. And always stop every now and then and check. Careful now. Just keep going. Be patient so you don't uh, mess it up. That line's gone. You know what I might do? I might leave this just a, sh a shade wide so I can get this edge perfect. This edge can always be sanded off when you, when you sand that after you get your leading edge on there. Cause it's, it's on the line. I'm gonna, I might sand it just a little bit more. Try not to swear. I'm 
you just gotta be careful. Call that one done. And I will do the other one. <coughs> Gotta love balsa sanding dust. I got to straighten that up on that one. Okay, so I'm, I'm good on this side. Got a little bit more to go on this side. So I'm just going to concentrate my sanding on this half. So I'm basically, see how that half is open. I'm just putting any kind of pressure over here. Just a little. That's got to be perfect right there. Let's try this. Yeah, those are perfectly lined up. I'm done. Flat, flat, right flats. Okay, so now we have to, all these little dash lines, we have to transfer onto these. So I'll put you in fast speed for that. You've seen that done probably a half a dozen times on this model so far. So I'll put you in fast speed, tape these on, and then I'll just be marking the line. Well, there it is. Got all the lines that we need on the flaps. And now we have to put them together. Next step is to glue the leading edge of the flap on. It's a uh, 3 16 by 5 16 by whatever this length is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this ruler I'm gonna, I'll pin it in place. First put some wax paper down just in case. So 
So I'm gonna pin this ruler. It doesn't have to be necessarily on the line. And I'll pin it just to keep the, the leading edge straight because I don't want to I don't want to you know it to bow or wave on this edge. I want this to be perfectly straight with the leading edge on it. So I'm gonna basically scissor pin this ruler in place. That'll be my guide. So now I'm going to go ahead and also pin this in, pin it up to, in fact, I probably want to move a piece of wax paper. And I'm going to fold it so I have a sharp edge. That way I can take this all the way up to the edge and not glue the uh, flap to the ruler. That would kind of suck. So, okay, there I got my fold up against the ruler, the flap up against the ruler. I'm going to push it up close and I'm going to pin it. To the table fairly close to the leading edge you only need about maybe three pins not like that now what I'll do is I'll take this leading edge mark it long of course and of course this is not straight but I'm gonna I'm gonna glue it both side down, I believe, on on both. That way it'll match. And once you get them hinged, it'll straighten it. But I'm gonna make them long on either end. It doesn't have to be beveled yet. I'm gonna make my mark. Just just a hair long on either end. And I was going to cut this side square. that's the bowed side so I'm going to put that side down now what I'm going to do I'm going to run a bead on this and then I'm going to place it on there and get it in position as quick as possible wish me luck I'm using a medium CA I could probably hold it down and use thin but I'd rather use this medium might have to call up Bob Smith and order some new glue.
and it's perfectly along that edge just like I wanted it. And I'm not going to sand anything yet. I'll uh, do this other one. Same, same deal. Pin it in three spots. Actually glued it on straight actually. Alright, let's measure this. Save that. Like I said, never get rid of your scrap. Test fit. All right. Let's glue it up. Okay, the next step is to do these ribs. And it says you can angle cut them before you glue them. So, you know, you basically butt it up against there and make your mark. They're not going to have to go all the way to that very edge. I think they only go, I don't know, quarter inch up to a quarter inch to that so matter of fact it's right there i might uh, mark that line and just make it that long and i don't think i'm going to uh cut them at an angle because i'll i'll screw that up bigger than crap so i'm gonna go ahead and i'll just make them and then sand them to shape Okay, I drew my quarter inch line here. This is where the ribs will end. All right, I don't need to make the ribs all the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and all these ones that are coming down at a 90, I'm just gonna cut a bunch of them and then we'll start gluing them in. Okay, so I rigged myself up a little jig here with my little Micromark table saw. And as you can see, if I butt this up against here, I'll get my two and three quarter inch ribs. Now keep in mind, there's no guard on this. So you want to make sure you use a guard and keep your hands away from the blade. But I'm going to whip out a whole bunch of these ribs using my jig. Well, that was quick and easy. Got all my ribs cut. Now we go through the process of gluing them all in. Okay, I just want to bring you in close to see what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using this machine part to hold it 90. I'll tack it, tack it, move this, run my glue. I'll do that on all 36 ribs. 
Let's get going. All right, there's one flap, all the ribs are in. Got these little narrow weights from uh, Tom Morris. Uh, it, it, you can find it off the Stunt Hanger Forum website, uh, but they're very helpful for stuff like this. That'll keep that, that uh, flap nice and flat. Well, that's tricky to say, while it dries. And then as I'm doing these cross sections, I'll just remove it. Do a cross section and set that on top of the cross section. That way it's still flat. I'll, I'll keep those on this thing until uh, I start doing the sanding. So I'll do the other flap off camera. Because it's just taking up time. I mean, he saw it on this one in fast speed. I wonder how fast it looked. Probably looked like lightning speed. All right. Got to get to work. Okay, there's two flaps, completely ribbed. I have to take mom to an appointment tomorrow, so and it's late. So I'm going to continue this tomorrow. But for you, it'll be like uh, half a second. See you in a little bit. That wasn't too long, was it? Let's get back to work. Okay, so we got all the ribs glued in a little while ago. And I've got these weights setting on here to keep my flaps flat. It's like a trick phrase there. Flaps flat. Say that three times fast. Anyway, next step is to put all these little, uh, the cross sticks in in between all these ribs there's a 3 32nd square one and a or not 3 30 seconds 3 16 square and then there's a uh, 1 8 by 3 16 we'll put all those in i'll do a couple uh on video so you can see how i cut them and all that and then the rest i'll do in fast speed so what you're going to need to do these i guess you can call them stringers or braces or whatever you need your stringer. You need some sort of way to cut them. I like to use these little micro miter boxes sometimes. Sometimes the little uh, table saw and sand, sanding blocks. So you can like, you cut them, you know, you measure them, you cut them. If they're too big, you just give them a little sand and then until they fit nice and snug. You don't want them to fit too tight because if they fit too tight and you, you're putting all those in there too tight, when you go to undo all the weights, it'll go ring. It'll uh, bend on you because you, all of them are, every one of these things are pressing out on each other. So it's going to make it curve. So you want to just, you want them to fit in there just right. And I prefer a thin CA to get them in there and wick that thin CA in there. That it's a, uh, it glues faster and it'll, your time will, you won't waste so much time. So anyway, that's the tools. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in as close as I can get you, so you can see what I'm doing, and uh, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off by squaring this off. You can see there's a little bit of a ding in it or whatever, so I'm gonna square it off with my miter box. It's off camera. I just want to I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing in here. So let me square this off. Just, I'm just cutting the very end of it off. I don't know if I have enough. I'm pretty sure I got enough to do both of them. So there it is, cut clean. I'll, I'll sand it square, just sand it a little bit. And then I just press it up against there. Move all these weights out of the way. 
kind of eyeball where you want the mark. And I'm going to cut it just a shy long. In other words, I'm going to leave the line. And before I sand that, I'm going to test fit it. You can see I need to, it needs sanded a little bit. Sand it until it fits in there just nice. It's getting close. See, that's too tight. You can see if it's hard to push down on, that's too tight. So you just need to keep sanding it until it just sets in there really nice. It's a little bit too tight still. I just want it to set in there. There, look at that. Yeah, that's a little bit, a little bit more. You want to be able to go in and out without lifting that flap up. And then just center in your lines there that you already pre-made. I, I like to hold down on it and just hit a little bit of the thin CA on the ends, which I'm going to have to cut my the tip off. It clogs up pretty easy. I want to make sure I'm perfect in there because they all got to be lined up perfect. That's one. I'll do one more. Then I'll zoom out and put you in fast speed for the rest of I'll do all these 330 or 316 square in fast speed on both flaps. Then I'll come by and do two in regular speed and then the rest in fast speed of the other one. Mark it. And when you cut it, Leave the line. Let the saw do the work. Don't push down on it. Look at that. That's perfect. And when you do this, you want to make sure it lines up with the previous one. Pretty good. Okay. That's two. And I'll go ahead and do the rest of them in fast speed. This section right here, well, you can't really see it because I'm zoomed in too far. But uh, there's a little tiny section where it tapers. You get it gets like a little tiny sliver. I'll show you how I do that when I get to it. Okay, I got that 316 square, the first flap done. 
Now, uh, I'm going to bring you in really slow over top of it. There's a screw up. And if you notice it, put it down there in the comments section. And I'll show you that little teeny section that you had to really uh, cut in carefully. So I'll show you. Okay, here we go. See if anybody can notice the screw up. Did you notice it? If you did, put it down there in the com comment section. Now here's this little tiny piece. Boy, that one took a little bit to get in there perfectly. But I think it's lined up pretty good. It's on the lines anyway. All this gets sanded down. As a matter of fact, I think even the rib will get sanded down to the top of these. It'll all be like one one piece. Anyway, I'll put you back on the tripod and uh, do the other flap with the 3 16 square and then we'll uh, do the other one, do the other stringer. I think that right there is why people buy ARFs because that takes a long time and it takes a lot of patience to get those in there straight. I got both those 3 16 square in. I'm going to head to the 1 8 by 3 16 I'll just do all those in fast speed because uh, you already saw how I cut them. So let's get to her. Okay, I got a pro tip for you. If you want to use it, you can. Or if you want to file it under G for garbage, it's fine with me. But I think it's important since I'm on this section that I want to show you, the flaps. Um, it's mainly concerning those cross pieces. I'll bring you in close and I'll show you. Yeah, they're, all, they're both done. Okay, the pro tip that I was talking about is you have to draw the two lines along the length for both these. Now the pro tip is when you're gluing these things in, line them up with just one of the lines. Pick a line, whether it's the top line or the bottom line. Make sure you keep, make sure it's straight with that line and stick with that line the entire length. That way when you're done, every one of these things will be in perfect alignment and you won't have any that are like, you know, off center to each other. That's This is exaggerated, but if you if you were to like follow this line this line then this line and then this line you will notice that this one will be too far in one direction so follow one line the entire length that's the point i want to make and your uh your flap spars or whatever you want to call these things i guess it's a spar will be perfect in alignment i'll uh, see if i can't show you That's one, and there's the other. Next step, we gotta sand them. Okay, on this step, we're going to be sanding the flap angle. And it goes from 5 16 to nothing. And this edge right here will be tapered to 1 30 seconds right now, or no, hat, yeah. It's right now the 16th. It'll be tapered to a 32nd. So I'll start sanding. 
a little bit and then I'll put you in fast speed for the rest for both flaps and as you'll notice I have one that's a little high that's because I didn't have enough 5 16 so I used my leftover 3 8 to finish up the flaps I got had to use one on this one and two on the other flap but as you can see there they're flatter and all get out so I'll go ahead and start sanding and then uh, put it in fast speed. I'm gonna try to keep it in this area because I think that's where the cam is pointed. I'm gonna be using my perma grit. Uh, this is the 120 side. This is the 60 grit side. I'm gonna try out the 60 grit side to get it going, and then I'll switch to the 120 to smooth it out, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. Wish me luck. see how much I don't think you're in. When we're done sanding these these uh, spars that go across here will be level with these ribs. So I've got a ways to go. And I'm using my table here because it's flat and it's got nothing on it to cause a ding on the other side the balsa wood. I think what I'm going to start is this 3 8 I'm going to sand it down to 5 16 that way I won't break it. You get the idea, it's gonna take me forever, so I'm gonna put you in fast speed. As you can see, that's one complete flap, even the taper, I tapered it. I believe I got the same taper as the wing and all that's left to do on, on the flap on this one is to put the uh, hinge blocks in and that'll be done. So I'm going to set you up and I'm gonna try this, fit it to the wing and see how it looks. Well, I was gonna try to fit it up to the wing and then realized it needs to be sheeted first, so uh, can't do that yet. I was wondering why it wasn't looking right when I was uh, trying to get it fitted in there. So I uh, guess I'm gonna have to wait on that. But we got one flap done. I'm gonna do the other off camera and then I'll get back with you. Okay, the next <clears throat> the next step after sanding is to glue in these flap stringers. Hopefully I can get them on there straight, but they go in just like that on each one. And uh, first off, I'm going to take my straight edge and make sure that 
looking good as far as flatness. Yeah. Okay, it looks good. All right, so I'm gonna run a bead down and I'm gonna put these on as uh, straight as I can do them. They're, it's gonna be a treat. We'll see how that goes. And I'm gonna use medium CA so it uh, won't take as long to set up on me. I'm gonna have to order some of this stuff. Wish me luck. Try not to glue your hand to it. it. Says to use a straight edge and set it on it. While the glue sets. Okay, that's on there. I think this next one, I'm gonna run the sandpaper down the edge. I don't like that ragged edge. Just gonna lightly sand the edge of it. This little, these strips are supposed to stiffen up the flaps so they don't warp. All right, there's two. Got to do the leading edge. Good thing I looked at the plans too. I thought it, I had six of them. I was like, hey, this ain't going to work out. Make sure I put it on the right part of the leading edge, but it shows it. It's 
it's pretty much 3 16 so I'm just gonna line it up and glue her on. Just hold that line up for the glue to dry, or set, I should say. Should be good. Yep. All right, we'll go on and do this one. Light sanding is all I'm doing on these. Kind of jagged. I'll start with the leading edge. Try not to glue your fingers to the flap. I pin them down to the board so they don't move when I'm doing this. One more. And I'll <clears throat> unpin them and turn it over and trim these off and sand the ends. Okay. Wow, that really did stiffen up. Holy crap. 
So I want to saw those or cut them. I think I'm going to cut them all. Maybe. Yeah. Probably be better. That's one. I hope everybody else that's building these P40s are turning out as good as this one is. It's a really good kit. Got a long way to go. Alright. There's two flaps. Now I need to uh, sand these edges. And I'm going to use my trusty permagrit. That way everything stays square, I'll put it along this edge here. Too much of them just flattening the ends of those those uh, cap strips, I guess you'd call them. All right, two complete flaps. Now the next step is to glue in these hinge blocks, and I might as well do that while we're still rolling. See it. And I'm going to do that with medium CA as well. Sanding, sanding block in case I need to fit them. I want to go in there. I better keep a my knife hand. It's pretty tight.
that's one. Gotta be careful of that pin pin hole. I gotta get some wax paper in there. Glad I saw that. It'll require a little bit of sanding. Getting closer. That might be it. Perfect. That'll be perfect. This episode all about flask boy. It was a, the whole episode pretty much. And if you're sticking with me this long, I just really want to see this build come together.
I gotta get a, I didn't bring my plywood horn block. So I gotta find those. Okay, there's the hinge blocks. I gotta go find the plywood horn control block. I'll be right back. Okay, I located the flap horn blocks or flap horn plates, and they are located on different bays in each flap. So when you do this, you wanna make sure you know which bay it's going in. And guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take my pen, put a big X where it goes in each flap. Oh yeah, way different. Okay, so one goes here, one goes there. We'll get these glued in. And we're done for now. That's a tight fit. Medium CA. I'm gonna really goop it in there. Hold it for about 15 seconds. Hopefully, it doesn't seep up and glue your uh, fingers to it. I'm just lightly sanding the edges. And look at that, it'll drop right in there. Press it for about 15 seconds, and then we are done with the flaps. There's two complete flaps. I'll bring you in close to show you. This is the left flap, the, <coughs> the control or the uh, control horn block is just left of a hinge location in the left flap. And there's your hinge box. And the control horn flap on this is to the right, two bays over on the right flap. And then your Get your hinge locations. Anyway, that's the flap completion. Well, that about does it for this episode. We completed a full set of flaps and uh, we made them as straight and as perfect as we could possibly make them. After all, we are only human. And uh, I think I said something about a surprise at the end of the video. Uh, if I recall. But uh, as you know, I'm waiting on my retracts, to be honest. I still haven't ordered them yet. Uh, I'm going to go with Sierra retracts. And as soon as I get a chance, I'll give them a call and order them up. But I'm going to move on to the fuselage, which is which will be sweet, because that, that way you know I'm working on a P40. If you see that fuselage, it's unmistakable. So uh, we're going to do that. I've got a DLE 20RA coming. And uh, I ordered a True Turn spinner 
and I got a three bladed Zor prop coming that's going to go with the DLE. So until next episode, this will be the conclusion of episode 14. I hope you enjoyed it. If you stayed for the whole episode, I thank you. I appreciate you watching. And until next time, thanks for watching.